How's it going ladies and Bruce's on Bobby Six Killer, welcome back to Corpse Factory, we're still playing as Kojiro now. Nice to learn a bit, a little bit more about him, uh, and about his past, and everything that has made him the way that he is. And uh, it seems like uh, Nordico is not as lost it as she was, like she lost her mind. But uh, when we just last talked to her, she seemed to be back to normal, as normal as she gets. Anyway. I close the front door behind me. My place is always dark. The tiniest sliver of sunlight filters through the gap between the closed curtains. I like it this way. I spend countless nights underneath the unholy lights of the morgue. That fluorescent glow messes with my eyes. So I keep my apartment dark. It's comforting. The place is small. Smaller than my last apartment at any rate. Nordico's apartment. A tiny living space. One bedroom. A kitchenette. The bathroom is pitiful. A half-sized tub with a shower head above it. A toilet. No sink. I need to use the kitchen sink after finishing my business. But it's home. Moving here after deciding to leave my old place was the change I needed after Shizuko died. I threw away so much of my life from back then. I'm almost a completely different person now. Almost. I've kept my habits, mannerisms. The parts of me people find weird or off-putting. Can't help it. It's just how I am. All those quirky attributes that Shizuko couldn't stand. They're still with me. She's gone and I'm still here. Come on. I shake my head at the sound of my own voice. What a birthday, what a pointless day. Dwelling on the past doesn't suit me. I've moved on from Shizuko a long time ago. I'm only stuck on her today because of my birthday. Because this day reminds me of that damn French press she bought for me. But it's gone now and she's gone. All that remains is me. That's the way it's always been. Probably the way it's always, always will be. Enough. Time for work. I don't feel like staying in and relaxing. I shuffle toward the tall, narrow cabinet in the far corner of the li my living space. I hoist the door open and look at my clean white lab white coat. It's not stained or dusty like the one I keep on display near the window. It's my good coat, the one I reserve for special days, like my birthday. The white coat is resting comfortably on a white mannequin inside the white cabinet. I hate the colour white. It serves no purpose. Despite its useless colour, the mannequin holding the coat does serve a purpose. It carries my treasured possessions. Perhaps mannequin isn't the most fitting word for it, but it will do. As I grab my coat, the sleeve catches on the mannequin's fingers. I tug at it gently and manage to release the coat from the mannequin's bony limb. Later. Habit of mine saying goodbye to empty rooms. It used to be funny when rooms were truly empty. Not so funny anymore. Not when that face stares back at me from within the cabinet. Nothing to do about it. Happy birthday! Thanks. I don't have a gift for you. I'm sorry. All good. Nordico runs her hand along her opposite arm shyly. Not like her to act so awkward and embarrassed. I... I just didn't know. That's all. I know. She seems truly disappointed in herself for not knowing about my birthday. I looked at my noise feed and it even has a notification that today's the day. I'm sorry. I don't have a reasonable excuse. It's fine. Really. What's on the agenda today? I want to break away from this discussion. I hate my birthday. I hate Shizuko for leaving me. Nordico sweeps a stray strand of hair behind her ear and contemplates the question. Twelve deliveries. Tomoe has already prepped the bodies. She's waiting in the van. I've sent the photos to the victims. Only twelve today? <sighs> We're not getting many new requests. All of today's deliveries are just part of our backlog. There aren't many corpses left here, actually. We've managed to work our way through most of them. Uh, have to visit the morgue again soon. I see. Hmm, things seem to be slowing down. The copycat is stealing our business. I just know it. Yeah, maybe. Oh, that reminds me. Whatever happened to Ali's boyfriend? What do you mean? I can't believe I forgot about it. You were going to kill him. Oh, yeah. Somehow I'd forgotten about that too. Caught up in my own head today. Jinpei Matsumoto. Is he dead? Unlikely. Nordico's pout prompts me to explain. Heard him good, but Aoi arrived before I could go further. Oh, shit. Did she see you? Yeah. <sighs> she doesn't owe me, though. I suppose. Wait. You didn't hurt Aoi, did you? The tone of panic in her vo grasping voice is impossible to disregard. Of course not. <sighs> Aoi's innocent, you know? She can't get caught up in all this. I know. I never heard a friend of Nordico's. Unless they hurt me first, self-defense or something. So, what do we do about Junpei? If he's still alive, 
He knows that you're involved with the morgue and with Corpse Girl. Don't know. Actually, he did say something interesting. Harold? What did he say? I quote, Every person targeted by the Human Removal Service is removed by the Herald's hand. End quote. The Herald? Who the fuck is the Herald? Did you mishear? Was it supposed to be Gerald? Gerald? <laughs> Harold. Apparently some prophet. A visionary. Junpei says he's immortal. Immortal? You're not serious. Hmm. Every killing is carried out by him personally. What the hell? How is that even possible? How can someone kill so many people without getting caught? I shrug. My tongue subconsciously licks the gap where my tooth once was. Guess he's good. Ugh, what a pain in the ass. Anyway, I'll take care of those deliveries. Thanks. I'm going to try and dig up something. Dig up? Not literally. Information. Online. Had me excited there for a moment. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll be the first person I tell if I decide to go digging up bodies. <laughs> Thanks. That's sweet. I think. <laughs> I throw Nautico a lazy wave and take my leave. You finally good to go? Yeah. Good. I want to get this over with. Okay. Oh. Happy birthday, by the way. Thanks. It's funny to think that Tomoe knows about my birthday. I assume she read about it on Noise, since we're now friends. Get any prezzies? Not one. Lame. What do you like? I'll buy you something. Really? You'd do that for me? Of course. He may be a creep, but birthdays are the best. Everyone deserves a present. I think she's being nice. Not a fan of being called a creep. That's just how she rolls. <laughs> well... I'd like a French press. Would I? What's that? A coffee press. Oh, I know those. Yeah, sure. I'll order you one. Cool? Cool. Thanks. Sure. Happy birthday, Kojiro. Surprisingly, she steps forward to give me a short hug. It feels nice. Contact. She's warm, not like Nordico, or the way I imagined Nordico to be. Her hair smells wonderful, like coconut. I'm not sniffing it on purpose. I'm not trying to play up to my reputation as a creep, but it's impossible not to smell it when we're this close. Her fingers tap against my back a few times, and then she releases the hug. A smile as warm as her touch spreads across her face. Come on, let's get going. Yeah. Tomboy opens the van's driver's side door and scoots inside. As the door shuts behind her, I can't help but entertain the thought of what she would be she would be like to have as a girlfriend, a partner, a lover. Ask Shinya. She's nicer, nicer than I originally thought. Heart's in the right place. Yeah, exactly. Like I said earlier. She's nice on the inside. She's just rough around the edges. But she's not Nordico. I shake the fleeting thoughts of my mind to urge myself to get on with things. Nordico's not nice on the inside. Nordico's psycho on the inside. <laughs> Delivery time. Sunday night. Time to take some more bodies, is it? Morgue duties have felt mundane lately. Boring. Pointless. Ah, just work. Lots of things I'd rather be doing. Had to come in early today thanks to an influx of deceased patients from the hospital. Bodies get passed through the hospital halls and land in my lap, unceremoniously. They need tagging. Need to be added to the inventory. Need to be stored. Cadavers are needier than some people. Don't know why I'm where I'm going to store this lot. Running out of room in this place. Only a handful of coal chambers still available. I can thank the Human Removal Service for that. This isn't the only morgue in the area, but it's one of the biggest. A lot of cadavers end up here. A lot of victims. But like, if the Human Removal Service, the guy from that, the guy who's running that, literally goes out there and murders uh, all his victims by hand, then surely all those people would end up needing autopsies and stuff for the investigations. So they shouldn't end up here, or at least not for long. I don't know. I don't know enough about morgues, I suppose. Which I'm grateful for, to be fair. A lot of victims. Weeks ago, I used to smile every time one of Corpse Girl's victims entered this hallowed place. It's kind of poetic. Nordico cherry-picked corpses from this morgue. Those corpses were delivered to victims. The victims died and they ended up here as fresh cadavers. Ready to repeat the cycle. It was beautiful. The circle of death. Now it's rare for Corpse Girl's victims to arrive. More common are the victims of the Human Removal Service. At least, that's my speculation. When multiple homicide victims arrive on your doorstep every day, it's not hard to piece things together. 
lacerations dismembered limbs rope marks bludgeoned skulls myriad mortal wounds inflicted on the flesh i always suspected corpse girl's copycat was behind the sheer amount of deaths raging across tokyo seeing the fruits of the copycat's labor firsthand has convinced me that we're not dealing with simple suicides and junpei matsumoto's words still ring clearly in my ears our hero he carries out all the killings personally it all adds up corpse girl has truly met her match while the human removal service continues to claim countless lives corpse girl's success is rapidly declining much to Nordico's chagrin corpse girl has become so well known that the general public no longer fears her like a figure from folklore or a fictional character everybody knows the name corpse girl but only the truly gullible believe that she can kill people i call it the bloody mary effect if somebody is predisposed to believe in a horrific entity they'll convince themselves that said entity truly exists when targeted by corpse girl such a person will succumb to suicide in an attempt to escape a potentially more grisly fate in reality they simply play right into the trap that corpse girl laid for them those that treat corpse girl as no more than an entertaining piece of folklore like bloody mary are immune to the fear someone like this can receive a photo of their own corpse and shrug it off as no more than a threat more of a threat than a spam email it's ironic that the success of that nautico sought for so long is the very thing that has rendered corpse girl's methods ineffective I wouldn't say all of this to Nordica's face, she's well aware of the situation. As for the Human Removal Service, no one seems to know about it. There's no mention of it anywhere on the internet, anywhere I can access it anyway. So how are people requesting deaths if nobody knows it exists? Police investigating the string of homicides hasn't mentioned it. If the site relies on users to request deaths, I'm at a loss to how those people are learning about it. It truly seems to be some sort of shadow organization except for the fact that Junpei Matsumoto essentially walked right up to me and revealed himself. I don't know his motives for doing so, and I don't know why he, how he found out that I'm involved with Corpse Girl's work. I really should take care of him. Yes, you should. Now. Ideally. Especially since we've already brutally assaulted him. I knock at the door. I rub my eyes and sit up slowly. I must have fallen asleep in my chair again. Still groggy, I get up and look through the front door's peephole. A single lonely package sits on the door, man. Don't know where it came from. Haven't ordered anything online lately. I swing the door open and pick up the plain brown parcel. Something rattles inside. Bringing it indoors, I slip my thumb underneath the package packing tape and tear it open. Nestled on a bed of packing foam is a white box adorned with the image of a French press. A coffee maker. Tomoe. That's right, this is a gift from Tomoe. She really bought me a birthday gift. Something that I truly wanted. My friend, Tomoe. After putting the package down, I retrieve my phone and open up noise. Thank you for the birthday present. You got it already? Just now, it's a good brand too. Sweet, glad you like it. Maybe I'll brew you a cup one day. <laughs> yes please. Extra sugar. You got it. Time away doesn't send a follow up message. I take that to mean the conversation has expired. <laughs> it feels good that she did such a nice thing for me. Almost forgotten what it's like to have someone care. Pity she has a boyfriend. Never stops going on about him. Nah, she really likes him. Regardless, it doesn't matter. I shouldn't misconstrue a kind gesture as affection. She's simply bestowing a birthday gift. Something most people would do for a friend. Something Nordico didn't even attempt. Don't know how to break down Nordico's barriers. Been trying for a long time, she just never seems to warm up. Maybe chasing her is a lost cause. But I'm tired of being lonely, I'm so tired. Nordico, Tomoe, I don't care if either of them would accept me. I'd give them everything I am. I just don't want to be alone anymore. The start of another long night. Alone, like always. The cadavers can hardly be called company. They don't speak, don't laugh at my jokes. Not like living people laugh at my jokes anyway. Yeah? Hey, I think I mentioned this a day or two ago, but our reserves have pretty much dried up. Okay. Reserves. She means her stash of corpses at the factory. She has a way with words. Anyway, three new requests came through today. I'm really excited. Maybe things will pick up again. Maybe. I'll send through photos of the fix. Can you select some corpses that resemble them? Tomoe will come by with the van. Okay. Thanks. Um, are you okay? You're pretty quiet. More than usual, anyway. I'm fine. I see. Well, thanks. I'm sending the photos now. Message me when you're done. I'll send Tomoe over. Yeah. I end, a, I end the call and return my phone to my pocket. 
It vibrates three times in quick succession as Nautico's photos automatically download. Three requests, not much, but enough to lift her spirits. I scan the array of cold chambers lining the walls. This place is packed to the gills. Shouldn't be a problem to find some matches for her. I take a stroll alongside the left row of chambers. All of the bodies within are due for crema cremation. I can take my pick from here, just like always. Business as usual. I fish my phone out once more and examine the new photos. Two women, one man. Middle-aged. Young adult, young adult. Normal everyday people. Corpse girl will wrap her fingers around their throats and try to kill them. Will they shrug off the attempt on their lives? Time will tell. I'll do my best to help Nordico end their lives. I wander toward the computer at the end of the room and log into the inventory system. Time to find some suitable bodies. The corpses you picked out are good. Two of them, anyway. What's wrong with the third? Mm, he looks a bit too old. Older than the victim, at any rate. I see. Sorry. It's not a problem. I think it'll still be convincing. Are we delivering them today? No. I received even more requests overnight. I need you to go select more cadavers. Sheesh. Again? Sorry. Aren't you happy that we're busy again? Couldn't care less. I'm only doing this for you. It's the truth, even if she doesn't want to hear it. I heard that Tomoe got you a birthday gift. Way to change the subject. I... I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be your friend, and I was just so caught up within my own head that I couldn't be bothered with your birthday. It's fine. It's not fine. So... If you'll accept a late gift, is there anything you would like? A date. With you. <laughs> anything else? No. You're being awfully forward today. I thought we agreed to just be friends. What's gotten into you? Nothing. Forget it. I have to look away from her to prevent her from seeing the snarl on my face. I'll go pick out some cadavers for you. Later. Okay. Bye. I step away and mutter to myself. Stupid. I'm so stupid. Why am I acting so depressed desperately around her all of a sudden? Because you're sick of being alone apparently, remember? Yo. Mm. What kind of hello is that, prick? Sauce. In a mood. Always the case with you, ain't it? Seems to be. She gets me. Listen. How about that cup of coffee you promised me? Huh? You know, come on, don't make me say it. You said you'd brew me some coffee with that French press thing. And, well, ugh, I could really use a cup, you know? Oh, yeah. I remember. Sauce. Noriko has sent me to the morgue. Why? She kill you? No. <laughs> Not yet. Takes me a second to get that she's joking. Oh. <laughs> Tomboy smiles warmly and waves her finger in the air. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it ain't every day a pretty girl offers to have coffee with you. So are we doing this or what? I can't fathom a reason for Tomboy's recent shift of attitude towards me. When we first started working together, she could hardly tolerate being in the same room as me. Now she wants me to brew coffee for her? Why? Does she want something from me? Is she in love with me? I think she's just being friendly. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Jesus. No, she's not. Definitely not. No one loves me. Even so, I don't want to be alone. How can I refuse her offer? Okay. I can put off the morgue until later. You finally came to your senses, huh? Well, come on then. Let's go to your place. I'll drive. My place? Last time a girl visited my home. It was back when I lived in Nordico's apartment. Back when Shizuko... Clucking my tongue serves to distract me from the painful memories. Let's go. This is your place, huh? It's freaking dark in here. Sauce. You have vampire or something? Of course not. I was just outside in the sun with you. True that. <laughs> Tomoe looks around the small room and stands uncomfortably by the wall. You don't bring girls back here very often, do you? No. Maybe if you made the place look more appealing, then girls just might want to come back here. You're here. Sure, but I'm complaining, ain't I? True. Why are you here anyway? It's not for coffee, is it? <laughs> You're a sharp one, ain't ya? Listen, I wanted to talk to you away from, you know. Your boyfriend? No! Jeez! Away from Noriko! Oh. See... This whole thing's been going downhill, wouldn't you agree? All this shit with trying to make people off themselves? Sure, I'm used to it by now, but shit started to hit the fan. 
How so? Well, there's the business with... What was it? The Human Removal Service? Noriko told you about that? Yeah, of course. We're besties, you know. They've been out there killing and killing, and the police want to shift all the blame onto Corpse Girl. After all, Corpse Girl is the only killer that has gone public. Her name and website are written all over the body bags we deliver. People talk, and everyone knows about her. Mm. So, of course the police are gonna assume she's behind all the murders. Maybe Shinya's dad is the Herald. And he's just covering his tracks using Corpse Girl. Except, she's not. Not really. A handful of them here and there, but even then, they're just suicides. Corpse Girl. Noriko. She ain't out there slashing necks and drowning people and setting houses on fire. She ain't doing any of that shit going down on the news. I know all this. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, if things keep up at this rate, the cops are gonna find her, Noriko, and she's gonna get locked up for life. I ain't gonna lie, she deserves it. The stuff she's doing is messed In up. In Japan, she'd get, uh, she'd be executed, wouldn't she? Thing is, me and you, we're comp accomplished. Accomplices? Yeah, that. We're in neck deep. If Noriko gets put on ice, we get taken along with her. Hmm, I see. You're worried about going to prison. Of course I am. I've got people to take care of. What would Shinya do if I got locked up? What would he think of me? Not to mention my little brother and sister. Tomoe's crestfallen countenance makes the room feel darker than it truly is. Her watery eyes break away from mine and she tries hard to restrain herself from sobbing. I can't. I don't think I can do this anymore. No matter how much she pays me, I just... I just can't keep risking it! I understand. This is difficult for her. She's torn between loyalty to her friend and her own freedom. I think your course of action is clear. It is? Yes. You need to step away from the game. It won't do us any good if you're not totally invested. You can make a fatal mistake that has consequences for all of us. If you're not committed, not focused, it's best that you part ways with Noriko. You know, you really are more understanding than you look. I thought you were a total social outcast with no feelings or empathy. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Let me finish. I... I was wrong. You're all right, Kojiro. <sighs> I'll... I'll take your advice. I'll talk to Noriko and tell her I ain't cut out for this anymore. It's for the best. I guess we won't hang out anymore. Do we ever hang out? <laughs> well... Our deliveries, our time at the factory. Dunno. Kind of grew to like it. Kujiro. Oh shit. I forgot. There's something I still need to do for Noriko. What's that? She asked me to go to her apartment and pick up some clean clothes for her. I owe her that much at least. You wanna come with me? Her apartment? Noriko's apartment. My apartment. Not anymore. I haven't lived there for a while, but it'll always feel like mine. I wonder if there are any old memories to find between its walls. Okay, I'll come with you. Do I need to break any windows? No, of course not. Noriko gave me your keys. I see. You sound disappointed. <laughs> I shrug and let her accusation slide. I didn't expect a flood of mundane recollections to drown my mind as soon as I started climbing the staircase. This place had such a hold over me. My past life, my life with Shizuko. It's so foggy, but so familiar. I don't even feel like the same person I was back then. But of course I'm the same, I'm still me. And the stench ingrained in these walls. Every time I come in here, it smells worse and worse. What is it? Don't know. Mold? Mildew? No, it's more sickening than that, it's something rotten. Yuck! Anyway, her place is up just a few more levels. I know. Oh, you've been here before? Mm. Huh. Tomoe abandons her thoughts in the air and continues climbing the stairs. When we reach the landing below Nordico's floor, a young girl's voice rings out. Hello? Daddy? It doesn't take long to identify the owner of the voice. A girl no older than seven is knocking repeatedly on the door of an apartment. Oh? She notices our arrival. Who... who are you? Kojiro. Hello there, my name is Tomoe. What's your name? Momo. Nice to meet you, Momo. Do you live here? Mm-hmm. The door's locked. I can't get inside. I see. Somehow the girl's locked herself out of her own apartment. Is your mommy or daddy home? I think daddy is home, 
but he won't answer the door. Let me try, okay? The young girl hesitantly nods, nervousness evident on her features. Tomoe slams her fist against the apartment door, unafraid of holding back her strength. Yo, anyone home up in here? Hello? Anyone there? After a good 30 seconds of pounding the door, Tomoe puts her hands on her hips. Are you sure your dad is home right now? I think so. He was here right before I went outside to play. Man, he's already dead, isn't he? Tomoe grimaces and looks me dead in the eyes. You don't think something happened, do you? Don't know. I crouch down and rest my weight on one knee, so that I come face to face with the girl. What's your dad's name? Um, it's Kenji. Kenji, huh? And what was he doing before you went to play? Momo twiddles her fingers uncomfortably. Her expression turns thoughtful as she tries to remember. He was watching TV. I see. Thank you. I stand back up and turn to Tomoe. She raises an eyebrow as if in disbelief of the polite persona I adopted to talk to the girl. If he's got the TV on, it might be too loud for him to hear us. Anyway, I'm sure he'll open the door soon. We should go up to Noriko's. You're unbelievable! Can't just leave her here outside. I ain't leaving this girl here! What if something bad happened to her dad? <laughs> something happened to dad? No! No, oh, honey, I didn't mean it like that. Kojira, we need to get in there! Tomoe's sentence is cut off as the apartment door suddenly opens. A formidable man, broad shouldered with a smouldering expression, now inhabits the open doorway. <sighs> I knew it! Shinya's dad is the killer, isn't it? Clear the doorway. He takes one look at Momo and then turns his neck to bark at somebody behind him. The daughter is right here! Bring her with us! Hurry it up! The stern man pushes past me and I stumble as I try to get out of his way. I don't like being pushed around, but the sight of half a dozen uniformed police officers shuffling out of the apartment behind him encourages me not to retaliate. Daddy? Dragged along behind one of the officers is a handcuffed man in disheveled clothes. Momo! Oh, thank God! Oh, I see. It's because... Because, uh, what's your face? Nordico was using his, uh, his internet, so they finally figured out that this is where Corpse Girl's website's IP address was. So they came to arrest him. Sweetie, Daddy, Daddy has to go to the police station for a little bit. I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm so sorry. Before he can squeeze out another word, the police officers yank him away from his daughter. He's accompanied downstairs and disappears from view within moments. Daddy, come back! Daddy! The final police officer ex to exit the apartment bends down in front of Momo. He mumbles something to her and then grabs her shoulders in an attempt to steer her toward the staircase. going on here? Tomoe takes a step toward the officer, her fingers slowly curling into a fist. Don't. I clutch her fist in my own and force her to lower it. Don't get involved. It's a police matter. I think she understands my vague warning as she stops struggling against me. Momo. The young girl is escorted downstairs and Tomoe stands defeated next to me. What the hell just happened? You got arrested for being corpse girl. Tomoe is uncharacteristically quiet as she searches Nordico's apartment for clean clothing. Witnessing that man, Kenji, get arrested in front of his in front of his own daughter seems to have dampened Tomoe's spirits. Funny that. Although he's a stranger, I can't help but feel bad for the guy. Don't know what he did wrong, but surely his daughter didn't see need to see that going down. You okay? Tomoe ignores me as she rifles through Nordico's drawers. I decide to bite my tongue and simply take a seat on the edge of the bed. The first man to leave the apartment, the guy with the broad shoulders. He looked familiar. Very familiar. Yeah, didn't you say you had dinner with Shinya's dad once? He seemed to be in charge of the officers. A detective? Yeah, that's it. A police detective. I've seen him on TV a few times lately. He's the one heading up the investigation of the recent homicides. The one accusing Corpse Girl of being the culprit behind the Human Removal Service's string of murders. Interesting. Then, the man he apprehended, Kenji. Is he involved with the case? Is he a suspect? Is he the Herald? A neighbour of Nordico's. Could it truly be? Could Kenji truly be the leader of the Human Removal Service? No. I try to connect all the dots in my mind. He lives close to Nordico. Might even be on speaking terms with her. He might have access to Nordico's computer, her website. Could he have been the original hacker stealing Corpse Girl's requests? The copycat? It all seems coincidental, but it almost makes sense. It's more likely than, than not that the copycat is someone who personally knows Nordico. Someone who has an inside view of her life. But what's his motive? Looked like a normal guy, just a father living with his daughter. What could have inspired him to embark on a killing spree? Actually, for that matter, 
What inspired Nordica to do the same in the first place? Never mind that, it's irrelevant right now. Kenji. Are you the one we've been looking for? Are you allied with Junpei Mitsum Mats Matsumoto? Are you the prophet? The herald? The one capable of standing toe to toe with Corpse Gun? Okay, I'm done. I blink a few times and look at Tomoe. She's standing with a pile of clothes neatly nestled in her arms. Can we get going? Yeah. Leaving now is for the best. I want to get home. I want to spend some time with my thoughts. There's a lot of new information to sort through. And with that, it's time to wrap this episode up here. Poor Kenji, eh? Based on what, uh, what she said about how she was using their internet and stuff, I kind of saw this one coming from ages ago. It's still sad to see, though. I feel bad for Momo. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for getting out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.